Back in the 90s, when I was barely a teenager living in St. Louis, my dad came home with a recipe for white chicken chili that he said he got from a friend at work. Although my mom swears the recipe came from my Aunt Carol who lives in Phoenix, Arizona. Well, that coming weekend, we cooked it up and yo, the flavors, insane. Got shredded chicken, stock, beans, chilies. Yeah, if I can remember a dish from some random Saturday 25 years ago, you know it had to be tasty. So let's see if we can recreate it. Sound good? Let's cook. I've got one pound or 454 grams of navy beans. You can also use cannellini or great northern beans. And it's always advised to pick through dry beans because, well, you never know what you're gonna find in there. So just give it a once over, then transfer it over to a container. What we're gonna do at this point is add in some cold water. We wanna cover it by about four to six inches, put a lid on top, and we're just gonna put it in a cool, dark place, let it sit overnight or for up to 24 hours. And going with dry beans means more of that bean flavor incorporated into the soup, just more deliciousness. Now, if you only have access to canned, no problem. I'll show you how to do that later. Here's what we do next. I've got three medium-sized yellow onions. You could also use whites or sweets. Slice off the end, slice in half, remove those outside peels and save those peelings. Put them in a bowl to the side. I've got plans for them later. Then just give them a large dice or a rough chop. This does not have to be perfect. Going to transfer those to a bowl just so they're easier to carry right over to our cooktop. Next, I've got a large rondeau pot. This is an eight quart rondeau pot. And the reason I always use these is because they're incredibly wide, way wider than a pot. It has a lot more surface area, allowing me to caramelize things a little bit better. Next, we're going to add in about three tablespoons of olive oil. We're gonna turn the heat up to low heat, then add in those onions. What we're looking to do here is caramelize them. This can take up to an hour and I'm totally fine with that. You wanna come back and occasionally stir maybe every eight to 10 minutes. Now there are going to be a lot of moving parts to this recipe. So I suggest you don't go that far because while the onions are caramelizing, we can get started on our chicken. I've got a three and a half pound or 1,588 grams roasting chicken. Now, the reason I love using whole chicken is it ends up being cheaper per pound. You can feed a little bit more and all those bones and cartilage in there are gonna make an excellent stock. So what we're gonna do at this point is take it over to the sink. I always rinse my whole chickens. And the reason being is because all the water that gets absorbed into the chicken kind of sits in the package a little bit. It's not blood, don't freak out at all. So I just like to give it a good rinse, especially in the cavity. Once it is rinsed off, we're gonna take it over to our cooktop. I've got a separate two quart stock pot. This one is much deeper. You're going to need a pot like this. Now we're going to add in our chicken followed up with one gallon of cold water. It should be about four to six inches over the top of that chicken. To all my comies, my chefs in training, you know how to make this stock even more flavorful? You know all the scraps, the carrot peelings, the celery that I always beg you to save and freeze until you have enough to make a stock in all my other recipe videos? Yeah, now is the time to pull those out. That's why I even save the onion peelings from the onions that we're caramelizing. That's good stuff. So if you have it, we're just gonna add in some peelings, some onions, some carrots, some celery. If you don't have any of that, no sweat. Now is the time to start saving, but let's for now get them in there. Don't forget those onion peelings that I talked about earlier. Add those in there, more flavor. Let's turn the heat up to medium. What we're looking to do here is bring it to kind of a low boil. It's going to take about 60 minutes for this chicken to completely cook through and break down. Of course, occasionally, like I said, let's come back. Let's give our onions a stir, see where we're at. We're starting to see that brown on there looking good. And it's all about timing when it comes to this recipe. Again, there are so many moving parts. We want everything to be finished at the same time. It's all about practicing these little things. I promise you, it will help you in the other food that you create. All right, the onions look fantastic. They probably got about 10 or 15 minutes left. For the chicken, it is done. And you know it's done when the meat starts to separate from the bone. We're just gonna leave it in there and enrich that stock even more. For now, let's talk about the peppers. So I've got quite a few peppers here. I've got two green bell peppers, they're large size, two poblano peppers, also large, and then two jalapenos. Now, of course, you can swap out any of these. Maybe add a poblano, take away a green bell, add another jalapeno, you be the judge. For the bell peppers, all you're looking to do is seed them and large dice them. Now for the poblano peppers, slice off the end, 
you can pull out the pith right out of the top and then just turn it over and give it a few shakes to get the seeds off slice it in half and then the same and then of course those tops those are great to slice up too so along with that and the rest of the pepper just give it a large dice add it to the bowl with the other green bells now for the jalapeno slice off the end slice it in half now this is where all the heat is in this pith and it does transfer over into the seeds now you know me i don't have a high tolerance for heat so i'm just going to remove the pith by slicing it turn your hand on the other side so you don't slice it off if you love heat leave some pith in there leave some seeds totally up to you now we're going to small to medium dice it same thing with three ribs of celery i've got 10 garlic cloves which we're going to smash and roughly chop can you believe i'm mincing garlic again what's the world coming to all right add that to the bowl with everything else head right back over to our cooktop where our rondo pot is let's check out the onions yes this is what flavor's all about that looks perfect Let's add in all the peppers. We're gonna turn the heat up to medium. What we wanna do is sort of saute these for about eight to 10 minutes and bring out a lot of the flavors in here. Super important to watch your heat here because if you char and scorch those peppers, it's going to make everything super bitter. Now, if you are nervous about that, what you can do is roast all the peppers, peel them, seed them, dice them up and add them to that pot. However, you just simply control that heat, keep an eye on it. Remember, I wanna show you how to cook properly. You should be just fine. Okay, let's drain this stock. So this can be a little tricky because the chicken is definitely cooked and broken down and you're probably gonna need a spatula like I did here. And somehow, miraculously, I got it over the plate in one piece. All right, set that to the side. Then we're going to strain our stock through a fine mesh strainer or a chinois. Now, using a ladle or even a rubber spatula or even a spoon, press all this goodness down. My chefs used to always pound on me. Make sure you get as much of that goodness in there as possible. All the flavors still in those peelings, get it into that stock. At the end, we're gonna have a little less than one gallon or 3.8 liters of chicken stock. Let's go check out our peppers. You're going to wanna to frequently stir this. It's on higher heat. Remember at medium, we wanna make sure nothing is burning. This is starting to look really good. The flavors and the smells are really coming out. At this point, it is spice time. I'm going to add in three tablespoons or 16 grams of ground cumin. Next, two teaspoons or two grams of ground coriander. Last but not least, two tablespoons or four grams of dry oregano. We're going to mix this in there and cook it for about two to three minutes. So real quick, you know how crazy I am about researching recipes to make sure they are as authentic as possible. I wanna get them as close to the real thing as I can. However, with this white chicken chili, I could barely find anything about the origin. I heard maybe something from the Southwest. If you have the answer to this, please drop them in the comments below. Thanks. Okay, back to the peppers and onions. These are looking great. It's been about three minutes. Let's go grab one cup or 237 milliliters of that chicken stock, add it right to that pot. We're gonna deglaze everything in there. All that fond, all that goodness stuck to the bottom a little bit, scrape it up using your spoon or spatula. Get all the flavors out of there. We're going to transfer this mixture right over to a blender. Who's texting me? Add all that goodness in there. Once it's in there, we're gonna add on the lid to the blender. Super important, remove that center cap. There's a lot of steam and pressure that can build up from all that heat. When you turn it on, it can explode. So what I usually do is add a towel over to the top. Let's turn it on low speed and then gradually turn the speed higher until everything is really smooth. Let's have a look and see where we're at. Yep, this is exactly what we want. We're going back over to our Rondo pot. Add all that goodness in there. Let's grab the remaining chicken stock. Pour all of that in there as well. I'm telling you, this is just going to go so far in the flavor department. All about those techniques. And because there's a lot of goodness left in that blender, my old chefs would always make me do this. Just add a little bit of that stock in there. Give it a few swirls around and pour it back in there. Flavor, my friends. Now for the beans, give those a drain. They've been soaking for about 24 hours. Give them a quick shake. Going back to that Rondo pot, just pour those in there. The goal here is to turn it on to high heat and bring it to a rolling boil. Once it is rolling just like this, we're gonna turn the heat down to about low medium, have it at a nice gentle boil, a nice little simmer there. It's gonna take about 45 minutes to 60 minutes for these beans to finish cooking. And for those folks out there that are like, yeah, I didn't soak any beans and I'm not using dried beans, I'm using canned beans. Okay, you need six 
15 ounce or 425 gram cans that are drained. You add them in there, you're only probably going to need a third to a half of the amount of stock. Remember, I need all that stock because I need to cook those beans. It's going to evaporate. It's also going to soak into those beans. Also, canned beans are already cooked. All you need to do is heat them up. So once they're warm, you can go to the next procedure. You're welcome. And I always like to come back every 15 minutes and give it a quick stir, see where we're at, taste the beans, see if they're done. So it's been about 45 minutes since we took the soup up to a boil, then brought it back down to a simmer. And what I usually do is take a cup or two out with some of the liquid, add it to the blender, and just puree it until it's smooth and add it back to help make it thick. But the consistency of the soup right now is pretty dang awesome, and it's only going to get thicker with time. I don't think I need to do that. What I am going to do is start taking apart that chicken. There's no right way or wrong way to do this. You simply want to remove the skin and any of those vegetables that may be stuck to it while we were making the stock and then pull off as much of the meat as possible, removing it right from the bones. Now, you're probably going to have to discard the skin and bones. I haven't found another use for it. If you have, then have at it, my friends. Once it's all removed, just grab a knife and roughly chop it. It is soft enough that you could use two forks and shred it and pull it apart. You be the judge. Just transferring it over to a bowl to make it easier to carry back to my cooktop. Add all that goodness in there. And then just using a spoon or rubber spatula, mix it until it is completely combined. Okay, real quick here. You know all that stuff stuck to the back side of your pot as it reduces down? Grab a rubber spatula and scrape that into our soup. There's just going to be that much more flavor from that stuff. Also, I want to show you what it looks like when beans are done. When they can hold shape when you're in the soup, and if you give them a gentle squeeze, they smush, that's perfect. Yes, my hands can absolutely handle super high heat. So a lot of times in a lot of the sauces that I make, you see me finish it with a little bit of butter. This is known as Monte Bear or mounting with butter, which really just means finishing with butter, just the fancy French term. But I'm not gonna put butter in here, and I know you may blast me for this, and that's totally fine. What about Monte Creme? Just a little bit of heavy cream, a little bit more body, a little bit more flavor. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Adding in one cup of cold, heavy whipping cream for, again, all that fat, all that flavor. Mix it in until combined. Then it's seasoning time. Add in some sea salt, fresh cracked black pepper. Mix it until combined. At this stage, taste it. See what else it needs. Maybe a little more cumin, a little more oregano, a little more coriander. You be the judge. And for cheese, because this is classically served up with a bunch of cheese, you got some options. White cheddar, Monterey, or pepper jack if you like a little zip. Speaking of plating this up, let's do this. Add a big old mound right to a bowl. Should be nice and thick. This looks amazing. Of course, let's add on a bunch of that shredded cheese. Now we're going to hit it with some green onions. I've also got some avocados. And then I figured, why not some chips? So much fun recreating this white chicken chili from my childhood. It's probably a little bit different than the one I had because, well, I know a lot more about cooking now than I did way back then. So let's not waste any time. Let's try some. <laughs> mm. The flavors are so rich. When thinking of white chicken chili, it's not a normal like chili con carne or Texas chili red like it's completely different, but the flavor, the right amount of cumin, the right amount of coriander, those caramelized onions. Okay, let me get, let me get one more. Mm. Beans cook perfectly, that shredded chicken, and the stock. I'm telling you, all these things together, so, so good. And if you like this, my guess is, honestly, you will love my chicken tinga recipe. It is loaded with flavor. I've got a great recipe video. I'll see you on there. You gotta get more of this.